Hello and welcome to the Red Special Guitar Podcast. Today I am somewhere not in the podcast studio. I am in a secret location own, own, known only to this man and another man and some other people and me. And I've been joined by Pete Malandrone who's invited me up to see what Brian May will be using as his rig for the current upcoming 2023 tour in the US. Correct. Thank you, Pete, for inviting me in. It's all right. Is that it? We're done. We are excellent. Okay, okay. So see, you, see you all yeah, in the next video. <laughs> Um, so Pete, thanks for, again for having me up. No We're going to go through the rig and yep. look at the guitar and talk about what Brian will be doing differently this year than he was doing in previous years. Not a lot, to be honest. Um, we try not to fix things unless they're broken. Yep. Um, there is one bit of equipment that we've added which doesn't enhance the sound. It doesn't change the sound, but hopefully it will help me get rid of spurious, horrible RF noise, which is the scourge of every radio system in the world because of the amount of digital stuff that's floating around in the world these days. You think of all the, all the TV channels, all the radio channels, all that digital stuff, all the mobile phone signal. And most arenas will have repeaters on their roofs or transmitters on their roofs. And obviously that emanates everywhere around the arenas. Some are worse than others. Yeah. The ones that are made of metal, uh, like the Ziggo Dome in a Amsterdam, is particularly bad. But you get, and it's, it's not the same every time. So, and it's not the same frequency every time of the, the noise you get. And sometimes you just can't get rid of it. Yeah. So we have a bit of equipment now, which hopefully will help me with that, which I will show you. Excellent. So shall we have a look at the guitar first? And see what is it? See what's going through, where the signal chain starts. There um, it is. Look there. I think there. I think I think it's there, and it comes out of there. Goes around that mm -hmm. bit. Comes out of there. So just one thing to mention about this particular marking. This uh, this mark here and this mark here is the sweet spot for the start of under pressure. So Brian can see it in the dark, so he doesn't have to fiddle about knowing where it is. He knows exactly where it is to make that really clean, glassy sound at the start of Under Pressure. Um, so I've got Nigel's treble boosters, obviously, yep. with the strap mount. New radio system from, we talk, we've talked about um, having a digital system for a few years. It gives, it gives you so much more, um, so much more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, scope to use different frequencies right. on the analog, system um you got a lot there was if, if you were locked onto a particular frequency you would get spill on either side so if you were close to something it would pick that up yeah. with digital because it's either there or it's not it's like your, it's like your digital radio in your car yeah. it doesn't fade out anymore if you go out a signal it drops that's it it gets gone goes, yeah. um, because it's locked into that one particular signal um so that's a change that you've made to try and make it more stable and more well, we had to yeah. really because it was becoming so problematic with the trying to find frequency ranges that would work wherever we were in the world. Okay. Um, and this system will, will work wherever we are in yeah. the world. So, and it's really expensive, really good. Um, and yeah, and we spent a lot of work on the last tour making it sound as close as we could to the analog system because yeah. Brian liked the sound of that analog system, yeah. which I think we've nailed now, really. Okay. Um, it just, yeah, it gives us a lot more freedom to, um, if, we, if we're in a particularly busy place, you, uh, frequency wise, th th there's a lot more, there's a lot more frequencies that we can, we can try. Um, so yeah, it's just gives, it's just, just upgrading it really. It's a bit of a, yeah. a bit of a tool. So yeah, so it comes out of, goes in there, straight through that, um, straight out of there and into them things there, which are my antenna. Lovely. So I have a, this one is a, um, that's an omnidirectional, which means it picks it up from everywhere. Yep. And this one I can point at him. So okay. I point this one down the end of the, down the end of the thrust. Yep. Cause that's obviously, that's about sort of 30 meters, 30, 40 meters away from this, probably a bit more. 
Um, so this is directional. So if you point it, it will it will pick up. Yeah. It will pick up the the um, receiver a lot clearer than this one possibly would. A lot of, on. I remember watching the Foo Fighters guys, and they've got a, an ego ramp, probably twice as long as it's about 100 meters long, and their tech actually sits there and follows Dave yeah. when he's running up and down to make sure that the radio doesn't drop out. I don't have to do that. Yeah. Um, might have to if we're on a slightly longer stage, which we might be. I think there's a stadium in Los Angeles that we're playing at, so it might be a longer ramp there. Yeah. And so yeah, so it goes in there, and then it goes into the aerial <laughs> into the aerial <laughs> distribution, which is here, um, which then feeds the radios. This is this is the main radio. This is the this is the second channel of yep. the radio. This is a spare unit in case this craps out during the show. Yep. Um, and it comes out of there and goes straight into this new box. Now what this does is a, it's a four channel e parametric. parametric EQ. <laughs> what this means is that if I start getting some spurious noise at a certain up there somewhere or wherever it is, which is, is data or horrible, yep. that's what you get. I can find it on here. And what I do is I can boost the frequency and I can move it along here yep. within this wave band. Yep. I can move it around until it gets really loud. And I can tighten it up like this and then I can take it out. So this is the theory, because we haven't tried this yet. <laughs> so the theory is that the guitar works more or less between 200 hertz and 8,000 hertz. Okay. So anything outside of that is not going to affect the tone yep. of the guitar. Now, if it is within this range that I'm getting the noise, then it's a choice. I can say to Brian, right, I've sucked out a bit of 4,000 hertz. You can either have it like this with no noise, or you can have it with half half of that frequency yep. ducked out, or you can have it flat. Yep. And that's that's just the choice. And the amount of time that me and Nigel have been trying to have been trying to solve this problem, it's it's different every time. It's different every show. It's different every arena. It's different everywhere you go in the world. Yep. There's no point in us chasing this around and trying to find a solution for every single arena. So. We have this sort of admitted defeat, haven't we, Nigel? Sort of. <laughs> sort of admitted defeat, and we're basically just disguising it. Okay. Um, so we're disguising the noise, or we're taking the noise, hopefully, out. <clears throat> and giving Brian an option so he can... Exactly, so yeah. Got... The, the only other option I can... The, the, the only other option, if it's really bad, is that every time he stops playing, I mute him. Yeah. So, because you, you don't know... To, when, when they're playing, when the whole band's like, you, there's no way, you, you wouldn't hear it. It's, yeah. it's too low level. It's when everybody stops and you can hear it and everyone's, what's that noise? So in a really, really bad arena, like the Zigadome, I spent the whole night, every time he stopped playing, muting him. <laughs> so you didn't get that noise. And because I know when he's going to come in and start playing again, yeah. I would then unmute him. Yeah. And that's the other way to, to get around that. Um, so, yes, yeah, so that's a good tool. And you can, it works over, I'll get that back to zero and there are four wavelengths that i can look at right um i can also hopefully if i press that button it's got a scanner on there so if there's a if there's a, a noise i can actually see where it is so you can see what frequency i can see it's on. what frequency yeah. it's on um so we're, we're this is this is a tool just for it's to try really i say it's a bit of an unknown quantity um but you're going on tour with it. But we're going on tour with it, and if you don't like it, take it out. Yep. Why not? So there you go. You just take it out and use it. We use it as a tool when you need it. Yeah. Which is what I'm hoping to do. So, out of this, it then goes into the main rig, which is all wired on the back of here. Um, this is where all the, the brain of it is, all the switch-ins. This yep. is how it gets split into the TCs. It goes stri straight away goes into the wah-wah, yep. um, because obviously the wah-wah has to be across all three amps. 
so it come, it goes out of the rig into the wah wah. It's all buffered, um, isolator, transformer isolated. It's all transformer isolated, built by my fabulous colleague here, um, <laughs> or, or Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, it comes out into the wah wah, then then from the wah it goes back in, and it then it starts to split into the stereo. Mm. Um, the these are operated by the MIDI switch up here. So when I hit the switches, it changes. Yep. This is my main unit, which is loop one. If this goes wrong during the show, I do that. Sometimes I do that during the show just to make sure the other one's working. Yep. And you wouldn't know, it doesn't, it just, just to see, and it's, you know, it gives you a bit of fun during the show. Yeah. Just in case it doesn't work and it all goes silent, great fun. Um, something to do. Yeah, something to do, <laughs> exactly, something to do. Um, this is this is a Nigel special. This is a Digitech pedal um, that Nigel has, has transformed into a, a rack mount yep. for me. This does exactly the same as a Digitech pedal do does. Um, the only thing this would be used for is the Tie Your Mother Down slide solo. Right. Because Brian was finding, because he switches pickups and has to get the slide out, yep. it's, it's quite too time consuming and you haven't got a lot of time to do it. Yeah. So we experimented with one of, with Tie Your Mother Down sound. And so all he has to do is get the slide out. And so I, I basically, I am basically switching his pickups yeah. to get that sound Fine. without him having to switch the pickups. Makes sense. Um, yeah, it's just a thing, it, I say it's just, it, all this is, is, is ease for, for, for me and Brian. Yeah. Um, so that's, yeah, that's what this does. So all I have to do every day is remember to turn it on, which often I don't do, which is why I used to have a sign up here that says Digitech on. It says it there. This is my checklist yeah. up here, which I look up every day. Um, this, uh, this famously I set up wrong one day and I put on, I, I turned it, I, I'd done something or it got not. And when I switched it, uh, when I switched it on for the Tie Your Mother Down style, it was phasing. It was, it was, um, it was that's something else. It was like um, keep yourself alive or yeah. something. And Brian came up to me after that and he went, "What was that?" <laughs> and I went, "I'm really sorry. That was me just messing it up." And he went, "I quite like the sound <laughs> of that. Let's, <laughs> let's keep it in for tomorrow." I was like, "All right." Then. So he played a couple of gigs. Um, they're often because of the because of the length of the show. Often at the moment they're doing a lot of. Um, a lot of sort of short parts of the song, and we don't often in time other than get to the solo now. Yeah. Um, it's just a, a part, and it will segue into something else because they're trying to fit all of their hits into two hours twenty minutes, so people don't go away disappointed. You yeah. know, if you, it, it, this, they always say it's too many, it's too many hits. Yeah. Because if they played everything everyone wants them to play, they'd be playing for five hours. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So that, that, that that's it basically, and just um, oh, and this. Um, this is my power, uh, my power smoother, yep. which keeps the power at 230 volts and 50 hertz. And does that run just the amps or does that run all runs of everything. this as well? That runs yeah. all of this. Um, if that craps out, it's actually off a UPS as well, right. which does more or less the same thing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'll just show you one thing actually, just to show you how much I kept these, because I thought you might like these. This, this is after one tour. So that's what you get in the front of the filter. Wow. After one tour. So it takes a lot of, takes a lot of punishment. Yeah. And that's these filters. That's the filters all on the front, the front here. Yeah. And it's, it's mostly to do, it's, it's mostly dust, but also it's um, the hazer yeah. that they put around the arena, which they blow all day long. So you can see the lights, but it's cracked oil. They, they tell you it isn't the lampies, but they li they're liars. Um, and so it's basically oil floating around, which is also problematic for the guitars yeah. because you have to make sure that they, they're clean and you know, they're not covered in oil. Wonderful. And then this here, Pete, is this oh, that's sorry, to do yes. with the radio? Uh, that's the radio, uh, that's the battery, um, battery charger. Oh, brilliant. So that's all brilliant. Um, so, well. yeah, so I've got four in the straps up here at the moment, yeah. which are waiting to go. Um, and I've got four spares. You can. Uh, it tells you how long they're going to charge, how long it's going to take the charge. It tells yep. you how long you've got left on that mm. pack. Yep. Um, 
great bit of kit this and you also when you finish the tour you can put them into storage mode right so it doesn't keep the batteries at at full uh, yeah it doesn't keep them at full at full charge it charges them down to the point where they're they're good and you can yeah. pick them up in a year a Brilliant. year's time and charge them back up again very clever um great bit of kit yeah the, the, the radio set is not cheap no this, this, this whole radio system is not cheap the other thing i have is a thing called a show link now what that does is that that's nothing to do with me i give that to our rf technician whose name's emma i'll give it to her and she integrates it in her system now what that does is 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 intelligent enough if it picks up interference on the frequencies that brian's on it will automatically change to another frequency and completely there's no dropout yeah it'll just go dunk and it'll go to another it'll go to another frequency if you're so if you get a police car go past or yeah. something suddenly goes on there it will see the interference it'll go i don't like that one and it'll just switch to another one which is pretty and amazing so she gets that and then she so then that will change on this and on, that, and the, on pack, the pack yeah it'll change that on the pack and it's seamless you can't yeah. you can't hear it go. It's not actually done it no yeah but it's just one of those no spinal tap moments belt and brace <laughs> well what, do you know what we do sometimes it's a bit <laughs> When you mute the amp, sometimes in some weird way, you get you get radio. You get you yeah. get talking through the, the speakers. It's really weird, <laughs> and you you can't find it. There's no way you can find it. Yeah. And if you change frequencies, it, it, it stays it's there. there. Yeah. So it's, it's again, it's one of those it's, things it's that's in, in the, the air, building, yeah. and there's nothing you can do. So you just have to go. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's with people talking out your amps. Go. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and then you unmute it, and he goes, "Is it still there?" And they go, "No, I can't hear it now." And go, "Okay, that's fine." <laughs> um, no, that's really clever. Okay, so uh, everything on the top panel. Obviously, this is my this is my sort of office space, really, if you like. Yep. Um, so we we'll start at the bottom. This the, the left and right mute and the centre mute, um, and the master mute. If if during rehearsals, this is a godsend because otherwise, when they're trying to talk or trying to work something out, the noise coming off the amps is just is just horrendous and it just drives everyone mad. So when they start talking, I just I just mute him. Um, I do use that during the show as well. When I change over to the Deaky amp for the guitar solo piece, which is the, 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 the Deaky goes on the end of this. So no, that's the wah wah. Deaky goes on the end of that and the end of this cable here, yep. which is floating around there. Now, if I hit that button, that then becomes live. But it also, unless I do that, it's on both it's systems. Right. It's on the Deaky yeah. and it's on. So there's a definite point in the show where he's at the top of the lift and I'm waiting for a signal and I go like that. Right. And that switches the main rig off and puts the Deaky on. And at the end of that section, I do that. Again. Okay. Um, this sometimes is handy. If you, get, if you start getting the noise that's, that, that you can hear an amp going down or an amp's gone down, I can mute the center one. If it goes away, I know it's the center one. I can do that, and then I know it's one of the outside ones. So it, it is, it is useful. Yeah. Um, this acoustic mute was for when we had the the badger the badger guitar, which we don't use anymore because they're playing crazy little thing called love down the front of the thrust. Yeah. So that would obviously mean getting two channels down there. So that's two radio systems, two treble boosters on the strap, and it was just like. Let's not do that. Yeah. Um, so that, if you hit that by mistake, everything goes off, which is why I've put a cable, cable tie around it, <laughs> so I can't press it. Makes sense. Um, this button under here yep. is one of these. This is when this is uh, when we used to. It was either radio or you could have a, a lead going right. into it. Also, that was for the for the acoustic. acoustic. Yeah. So I would have to unmute, unmute the acoustic and put press it on the lead. It. Um, I don't use it anymore. That's Again, it. don't want to press it by mistake. And you, you, can, you can, you can. It's like you're on autopilot, and you do it so do it so often that sometimes you just hit the wrong button. Yeah. Um, it's just you know human nature. That swaps from pack A to pack B. So when I do a guitar change, yep. if he breaks a string, I hit that, and it changes onto the spare. That's what that does. Um, these are the MIDI controllers control buttons which control the TCs yep it stays on that for 95% of the show we'll have a run through these later um, yeah it's just, again it's a, the panic one's quite good 
I'll show you that later. Yeah. Do you know what that's for? <laughs> no. Okay, that's a, that's a good one, actually. I like that one. It's my favourite button. <laughs> actually, no, this is my favourite button. Let's look around here. Um, to turn the Digitech on and off is that one there. We recessed it in there again. Two. So if there's something going on here, you don't hit the button by mistake. You've got to, you've got to want to press that yeah. to, to press it. Um, these are my notes. <clears throat> these are things that I mess up all the time. Yep. Um, so I forget to move the wild wild pedal sometimes. I forget to turn the Digitech on. I forget to put the slide on the stand for Radio Gaga. Uh, and I sometimes forget to put the pickups on the neck and middle um, for, um, for the start of Bohemian Rhapsody. Because right? he's, he's doing a costume change. Yeah. So anything we can do to, to speed that up. So if I give him the guitar and it's in the, it's in the bridge and middle, <laughs> then it just it just like oh no and it's, it, so I, I have to remember to do that as well um the rest of the stuff i've uh, things like spare strings um i have a, I have a table that sits over this side yep and if i need to do a string change because my eyesight is not good i have a light there and the, the neck sits up there so i'm right i can be right on top of it rather yeah. than it being flat yeah um polish as my, my friend Ben is in there, bless him. He uh, died of um, motor neurons disease. He was our keyboard tech, yeah. but he comes to every show with me. Brilliant. And so he sits in there, bless him. God bless you, mate. Um, all these things up here are things that I have ever needed for Brian during the show. Things like nail clippers, or nail clippers, nail scissors. These are the spare roller bearings, spare slides. I've got a pair of spare glasses. I've got nail files. I've got scissors, I've got cutters for strings. doing strings, yeah. um, some rock tips if his fingers get sore, especially if it's a really hot, sweaty gig, his fingers get soft and it starts to hurt him. You can buy these from A Strings Emporium. A Strings Emporium. A Strings Emporium, of the finest guitar yeah. shop in the world. Um, Is that and it's, it's, it's basically like, um, it's like super glue. Nice. But not sticky, so yeah. it, it puts a, it puts like a film over your finger and it just stops them hurting a bit and makes them feel like they've got calluses on them. Yeah. So that that's not a bad thing. www.astrings.co.uk I think it well might be, yes. Yeah. Yes. If you, uh, if you give the name Melandrone, I think they give you a... Uh, I don't think it's a discount. I think they put it up by they, 10%. They do, yeah. yeah, they do, yeah. <clears throat> if you are a member of the, the podcast patron group, though, you now get discount on anything Brian May related. Yeah, do you? Through Andrew, who Fantastic. set that up. So um, it's well worth signing up. It's well worth signing up to. What was it again, John? Yeah, um, if you go to the Red Special Guitar Podcast and sign up as a patron, right. you then get discount at www.astrings.co.uk for anything Brian May related. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> so it's A-strings, you say? A-strings, yeah. Fantastic. A-strings. Okay, all right. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so that's really, that's it. I have, oh, that, that's the power supply for my tuner, yep. which sits on the desk here. Um, a lovely switch, we'll have to show you this switch. This is my, I can probably undo it. This is my favorite thing <laughs> on the whole tour. Okay, that is over-engineered. Do you know what that does? No. That turns his fan on and off oh, on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> so if he, wants, if he wants the fan on, he goes like this. And I turn and I turn the fan turn on. on. I also have to turn it off during I'm in love with my car because they have all the dry ice right. come across the stage. If you have the fan going, it comes out and it just blows Close straight. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to remember to yeah to turn that off. Excellent. Um, that's basically it, I think. Basically. Or actually, what happens? Oh, I have a fan here. Yep. This is for me because um, I get hot. I also have a small hair dryer here now going back to what we're saying about hot sweaty gigs if brian's fingers get really 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 wet because he's, he's either raining or he's cold yep or it's boiling boiling hot he comes over to me and i dry his hand off with a with a hairdryer makes sense and it just it, it, because you get so hot and so yeah. humid and so wet hair dryer is brilliant like 10 seconds with a hairdryer and it's fantastic so use a hairdryer as well and obviously I can sit and make myself beautiful for yeah. a bit later. Excellent, yeah. which is this was good. the main reason. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then out front, does Brian still obviously have the wah wah pedal set at the front of the stage? It's the wah wah is... pedal. Now he has the wah wah pedal just for the start of I Want It All. Right. He used to use the wah wah in Break Free, um, but there's a moment in the show where halfway down the thrust, the mirror ball comes down and he wanted to be able to stand underneath the mirror ball because it looks brilliant. Yeah. 
So we were trying to work out how to get my wah wah pedal down there. And in the end, I just said, shall I do it? And he went, yeah. Right. So, <laughs> so I do the wah wah. And it, it, I sort of said to him, well, I've been watching you do it for nearly 30 years. Yeah. He said, okay, we'll try it tonight. Yeah. And um, so I sit at the side of the stage, the doing wild. it with my hand. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> it's not even using the wild wild for that song, <laughs> but it's it's fun. It's, it's yeah. just and, and the first time he did it, we were me and Brian were just cracking up laughing yeah. because he sort of he was looking, uh, he sort of went over to his wife. And I went no no no, go down the thrust. Oh yeah, and then he because he, he, he went. was just like again autopilot, yeah. and then he came back and he, he sort of gave me the thumbs up, and then the next one he went. Mm. Can I, do you mind if I critique your wah wahing about? I said, don't, no, absolutely fine. So he, he gave me a cut. Not so much at the end. Yeah. You had to, but so there, yeah, there, there you go. Brilliant. So, um, yeah, so that's what we do with the wah now, which uh, is endlessly amusing for me. Yeah. Um, I do enjoy those bits. It's just, yeah, it's just, it's just good fun. And then, so from there on then, after it's gone through all of this and through all of that, it comes out the back. It comes out the back. We'll you can, you can show everyone. Back, and it comes out. In a multi-core. To that, it comes out that end. Yep. This multi-core then we'll show, but that goes to the distribution for the amps. Now, if <clears throat> during the show, the whole, this whole rig goes out, I have a spare rig, uh, which Nigel made me called the mini rig, which we'll get out later. This has the same connector on it. Right. So, so what I do is I have this on the stage, like, that I have two white lines on it so I know how to line it up and I have the same white line on the end of that one if it goes down you do that the whole rig goes bang yep. and you plug the new one into yep. it turn it on and then you're on the spare rig okay. um, which is great because if, if this goes down it's probably going to be a power problem but it could be something in it could be something in here yeah. that, that goes wrong which I, I would never be able to find without Nige yeah so and you can't stop the show and go, hang on a minute, just got to give me 10 minutes, I've just got to ring Nigel, yeah. find out what's wrong, find out where the power's gone out, find out, yeah. So it's, it's just it, yeah. yeah. So it's, again, it's contingency it's plans for more or less everything. Yeah. Okay, on the last rig run that I did, somebody, um, who obviously knows a lot more about it than I do, commented on how messy it was in the back of this rig. Um, the fact that all the cables weren't tied up in nice, neat looms. So I just want to address that point. Mr. Bloke, whoever you are. Um, yeah, the reason it's such a mess is because during the show, if I have to fault find something or pull a cable out, how do I do it if it's all tied together? How would you do that? If it was all tied up together, how would you know which end goes to which end and which cable you've got to change? Yeah, not so clever now, are we? <laughs> so the reason it's a mess is because sometimes I have to get in the back of this and find a fault during the show while it's all going on. So one of, one of the other things that um, we found we possibly were having problems with were earthing problems. Sometimes the building earth isn't very good. Sometimes it's a long, long way. Sometimes it's uh, the earth's coming off a generator, especially if you're working at a stadium. Um, and we found that changing, changing the type of earth or where the earth came from did help with some of the interference. So at the moment, this little bridge in here would mean that the power that's coming into this rig is is off of the incoming power our electrician lovely young lad called jack wills strangely <laughs> um if we're having problems he he will he will take an earth from somewhere else he'll either take it from the stage or he'll take it from from anywhere he can and he'll swing that bridge out of the way and then he'll connect it onto here which then connects through here, it just gives us something else to try if we're getting lots of noise. Yep. And it has helped, it has helped in the past. Um, so that means anything, so that earth then goes through to the amplifiers and... Okay, uh, yeah, everything is earth back to the same, everything on Brian's rig is earth back to the same point. Yeah. So you can basically bob it to the stage if we need. Yeah. yeah, so we're gonna try that actually, we're gonna try that on this tour, having, because this, this, I'm right next to the stage. Yeah. So the electrician, we thought we'd try another way as well, is, is running the shortest, earth we can run yeah. so he'll bond something onto the metal part of the stage yeah. and then run a, a two meter bit of cable yeah. just to see if that helps as well because it's all it's all say it's all it's all a bit of a guessing game at every arena it's yeah. never the same it's never the same fault it's never the same noise it's never the same thing 
Um, I fixed the noise once by coiling these cables up at the amplifier end by lifting them off the stage and coiling them around the top of the amp. That made the, and it never worked again, yeah. but it worked once. So, yeah, all fun and games. So you have to try, yeah, it's just things to try. Things to try. It's the same, it's the same as people ask me why I, didn't, why I still use the wall wall and, I, and don't have a single power supply that powers everything. And the reason for that is, it's great and it looks nice and neat and it looks nice and tidy, but if that, if that box goes down, everything goes off. Like if the wah wah goes off, it doesn't matter. You know, I can just say, Brian, you ain't got a wah wah, it's broken, I don't know why. You know, if this is broken, if that, I, you know, this doesn't work. <clears throat> if the power supply goes off, if you've got one power supply of power and everything, it's game over, isn't it? So here's the mini rig we were talking about. Basically, as you can see, it's more or less a half size version of the main rig. It's only got eight MIDI buttons on it. It's got a very similar switching system on the top, very similar equipment. That, Apart from the EQ, this is a two-band EQ rather than a four-band EQ. I still have two TC boxes in there, same radio system, same wah wah, and this is my fail-safe. If the main rig goes down, I can easily get through a gig on this. Also, for smaller shows, I used this at the Taylor Hawkins tribute show because I didn't need to be switching effects, and I can pick this up myself and get it in the back of my car on my own. Yeah. Um, so it helps with that. You don't want really to be lugging that big thing around everywhere. Um, and that doesn't actually fit in my car. And this does, and I can lift it up on my own. So that's that. And it's a lot neater in the back as well. It's a lot neater, isn't it? A lot neater in the back, yeah. And you can see everything, look. <laughs> everything here. So this is, this is the, uh, these, are, these are all the outputs, and the, all, all these are all the, all the the wiring in and out of the various boxes. Yep. Um, so yeah, tuner out, deke out, right, centre, left, lead input. and lead input. So if I ever need to use a lead. And then you've got the same um, screw on the. It's antennas. got its own. It's got its own little antennas. All built in. All built in. And then the power supply. Literally, you put power. Power. So you put power into it. I don't have. I don't have the power smoother with this. No. Um, but to be quite honest, if I ever have to use this in the heat of battle, the last thing I'm worried about is smoothing the power. Yeah. But it does come off a UPS anyway, so um, obviously it would have then had to be bigger. One of those power smoothers is about two and a half grand. Yeah. It's just kind of not worth it, really. Yeah. Weight. Mm. Yeah. Another thing to maintain. Another thing to yeah. Another thing to go wrong. Another thing to maintain. Yeah. Back to this. So after this, it goes on this big long lead, which travels around the stage and ends up behind the stack of amplifiers with this distribution box. So you have right, center, left. Red for right. Yep. Citron for center. <laughs> it's the only way I can remember it. And the second letter of blue is, is L. Oh, there you go. And the tuner that sits on the side fill, so. um, which goes straight through the rig so I can mute. If Brian wants to tune, I can mute the rig. He can silently tune. Mm. Mm. And um, and then I obviously I mute him. This is, gets distributed to obviously left, centre, and right. These marvelous acoustic panels were built by Nigel Knight. Of course they were. And this gives the exact angle. These actually give the exact the angle of which the the amplifier should be sitting. Lovely. Um, Very clever. The one on the end here protects Roger. Yeah. So that, that's a Roger protector. These stop spill between each other, which was causing problems for our sound guys, because this one would always get less signal than that one and that one. Uh, sorry, other way around. This one would always get less because that one's getting the back all of, of all the others. Yeah. So the microphones were picking them up. This has helped, that they're completely happy with that. So yeah. nice design that. Um, it's, in a it's in a box called BM Waffles instead of Baffles. <laughs> now, th there is a reason for that. It's because when we were having an email conversation, I think every conversation was BM Baffles, but then I typed it in once 
and it auto-corrected to waffles, waffles, and it just became BM Waffles. And it, uh, I don't know, it just became BM Waffles. So that's the, just, that's the that's, BM Waffles that's case. The, that's where the waffles um, go. Yeah, so that, that's, that's it, really. These amps will get, um, we'll get the, the top of these. These are, these are Nigel's specials. Um, and they're the super special custom made. The super special custom made ones. The best thing, which we'll show in a minute, is you don't have to take the whole chassis out to do a valve change. Yep. Also, the valves being pointed upwards in this way helps with the heat yep. dissipation. Everything is about reliability, yep. really, and anything you can do, even 1% help is helpful. And just being able to not have to take the chassis out when you do a, yep. massive, when you do a, a valve change is, yep. is immensely helpful. And they sound fucking great as well. And um, so, so you've got these three main ones and then you normally have a wall of spares. I've got these three as the main front line. Behind that will be the Mike Hill ones, yep. which also are basically like these now. Nigel's modified these, so they're more like Nigel's Just, ones. Yep. Um, behind that, I'll have the three dummies, which are my spares. Behind the whole rig, I've got two more actual spares. Yeah. <clears throat> and in the truck, I have two more spares, which stay on the truck. I don't get those out. Yep. If I've gone through five amps in a show, then I'll be on the next plane home, yeah. I think, or killing myself at the side of the stage. So, uh, yeah, so hopefully, I mean, the most, I think the most ever we've gone through is two, two amps in a show, but touch wood, they're, they're, there's so much reliability built into these now. We take so much care over them. Nigel services them a lot more than they should be serviced, just because it takes half a day to service them for him to service 14 amps or 12 amps or whatever it is. It's just worth it because yeah. you'll pick up problems yeah. uh, which I won't have to deal with when I'm out on tour. Yeah. So 90% of the problems I get on tour is either a valve gone or a speaker gone, which I can quite happily deal with. Um, and if it ever gets to the point when I run out of spares, I would just get him on a plane and he'd fly it and fix them for me. Yeah. Um, you know, if it's, if once it got, starts getting to the electronics side of it, I'm, yeah. no, forget it. I'm, I'm done, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to tell you about those, John. No, lovely. Well, that's, that's pretty much it. And you said you take the dekey with you. I don't take the actual dekey. Um, it's far too precious. Yeah. Um, it's a cat. Well, yeah, so I've got two cat ones over here, which are sitting. In boxes. Oh, out here. So I have, this is set up just behind me, usually. It's starting to look a bit like the original Deaky now, as you can see, because it's, it's yeah, yeah, look. look yeah, but it's got, that's got a bit of road wear, isn't yeah. it? It's a time So warp. that's me number, that's, that's actually, is that number one? Or is that number none? Oh, that's number none. Number that's none. serial number none. Zero, 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 zero. We gave Deaky, or um, Nige gave Deaky zero, 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 one. Yeah. Um, and the spare is zero, 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 two. That's my one. Yeah. So, yes, offers, please, on yeah. the, yeah. I'll take 10, 10, 10 grand for it. Yeah. Yeah. Ten. Seems cheap. I yeah. you get more for it. Okay. Um, again, things to help my day. So, the power supply used to get in the way. So, Nigel just made me a nice little plug. So, I don't have loads and loads of cable extra everywhere. Cable, yeah. It just makes it easier to get. It, it yeah. saves 10 seconds off your day, but all these 10 seconds add up, yeah. add up to just making my life easier. Well, it's tearing it down and putting it back together again that at is, the next yeah. location. And, yeah, and, and it's, not just, it's not just about us, because we, we have to be, f we're last in, but we're first out. Yeah. Now, if I'm delayed by, if I'm 10 minutes late, that means my mates who are last out are probably half an hour late. Yeah. And it's, you just, you, we're a big team. And you, you just want to get out as quick as possible to because once our stuff's off the stage, they can then start bringing the lighting rig in. They push the stage up the other end of the arena and take it apart at the other end of the yeah. arena because then all the lights and all the video can, can come, come down, down on the floor. And then, um, but it's up to us to get off. Yeah. So, yeah. So everyone helps each other. It's a good, it's a good crew. We're a really good crew. We can see how all these different things that you've done over the years add up to making things easy. Not necessarily easier, but better for... 
better and for everyone else better. If, well. if, if, if you can improve something well one percent it's worth doing it. it's yeah. just worth doing it it makes my life easier it makes brian's life easier and it makes everybody's life easier yeah. um so i i help after i've finished the the keyboard techs out first he goes he go he, he then helps the bass tech they go out first and they're in the truck by the time me and the drum tech have got there the drum tech has two kits and a percussion kit. He's got about 60 cases of stuff. So when I've finished, I go and help the drum tech. So I've got specific things that I do for the drum tech to make his life easier. So I don't just pack my stuff up and go. I help him because it just helps everybody. Definitely. And then by the time we get out, we follow, we follow all the pushes out to the truck, make sure there's nobody left any cases anywhere. We have a, we have a truck pack, which is the same every night. So there'd be a guy in the back of the truck calling it. We have loaders in the back of the truck. And three of us will be down on the ground, load, lining the cases up in order in. for the pushers to push them up, and it all it just hopefully works, works. like sort of clockwork. Yeah. So, <coughs> and then we all go to the pub. Yeah. <laughs> easy peasy, isn't it? Yeah, nice yeah. and easy. Not yeah, really. Fantastic. Pete. Yeah. But anyone that's watching can see why maybe sometimes Pete's not overly keen after having worked all day and all night to to spend yeah. too much time talking to people about work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I do sometimes. Well, I'm all right after about half hour, but you know. As I said to you on the podcast, yeah. you know, one, if I'm loading out, don't shout at me for pics. Yeah. I ain't got time. Yeah. I just haven't got time. But everyone started bringing me pens, which yeah. is really, really nice. <laughs> I've got so many pens. It's good. Excellent. <laughs> Somebody bought me some pens and some gaffer tape. Excellent. As well. That's who that was. And gaffer tape, I think they bought me some sixpences as well. Yeah. Quite Fantastic, possible. But really, really useful stuff. Pens. Well, is there anything else you need? Printer paper? Um, no, cartridges? no. Um, uh, cigarettes. Cigarettes. Um, Jack, Daniels Jack Daniels always goes down well. Yep. Um, paracetamol. Yes. <laughs> Paracetamol, painkiller, yeah, always helps. So if we can upgrade from pens to Jack Daniels, pens to paracetamol. Jack Daniels, paracetamol, cigarettes. Lovely. Yeah. Okay. Any sort of alcohol. Brilliant. Yeah. T-shirt. I like t-shirts. Extra large, fat, roadie size. Yep. Um, yeah. Cool. I like presents. Presents yeah. are good. <laughs> Definitely are, especially <laughs> when you're away from home. <laughs> Absolutely. Not worth as originals though. Uh, no, they'll be gone, mate. By the okay. time, by the end of the rehearsals, they're gone. Yeah. yeah. Andrew Morgan. Andrew Morgan told John that my favourite sweets are worth as originals. So after he's just said something nice about A, a strings, I'm going to take it all back now. <laughs> he's a dick. <laughs> Phone 
So that's what we're up against throughout the world, is noise from them fuckers and everything else that goes with them and all the data and all the computers. So you can see how that just picks up out of the air on the pickups. Yep. So that is Brian May's US tour rig for 2023. Um, what do you think? Put questions in the comments below and I'll try and answer it or best you can just watch the video and it should explain. Massive thank you to Pete for allowing us to come up and do this today. It's been absolutely fantastic as you can see. Um, yeah, thanks for spending the time going through it. Thanks to Nigel Knight for being here on hand as well, hidden away, telling us what we're getting wrong and uh, <laughs> smiling and for his expert camera work. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks to Brian for letting Pete allow me to come up and do this. Been a pleasure, absolute pleasure. <laughs> and um, yeah, have a great time at the uh, the meetup. Sorry, I can't yeah. be there this year, but um, I'm afraid I've got to go and work. But next year, next year. And yeah, thanks, Pete. No have worries. a great tour, Anytime, and um, see you again soon. Yeah, hopefully, some see some of you out there. Because they need the money. Buy the yeah. tickets and the, all the t-shirts. Yeah. Really need the money. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much, everyone. And we'll speak to you later.